I feel like it's disrespectful that sometimes my brain just decides to remind me that it's smarter than me. Like it'll just ask me a random question that it knows I don't know, but it knows. Brain be like, hey, where's your pancreas? Huh? I don't, I don't, what? Why would I know that? I know. Well, good for you. Like that my brain has a mechanism to dispel toxins without my consent. When I was the one who put the toxin in my body is, is that's like, it's disrespectful. You ain't my daddy. Like I got food poisoning a couple years ago and I felt like it was my brain telling me that I'm an idiot. You shouldn't have ate that shit, huh? Yeah. And I'm gonna punish you. So you remember next time. I'm not going to remember next time, dog. I'm going to still eat them tacos at three in the morning from the dude with two fingers. Don't judge me. You can always tell how bad somebody's hurt by how much clothes are off after the fall. If they're just, you know, missing like a hat, or maybe some glasses, they're probably okay for the most part. They're going to be hurt. They're going to get up by themselves. If their shoes is off, they fucked up, fucked up. They hit the ground hard. If a sock is off, man, just straight to the hospital. I saw this one dude, he fell. Both his socks came off. I don't even know how that's possible. How loose are your socks that they could just fly off your body upon impact? Or how hard did you hit the ground? I seen somebody bust their ass and get up and take their own shit off. I remember one time I fell on my back, my full back. I just got up and started taking off clothes. The pain treated me like old boy from belly just told me to strip, you know what I mean? <coughs> just barking at me. Kids are funny when they fall because they don't know if they hurt or not at first. They look at the adult to see like, hey, how's the re adult gonna react to this? And if the adult's reacting badly, then, then the kid will start crying. I saw a two-year-old land completely on her head and then uh, I looked at her and smiled and then she smiled and then she ran away. It wasn't a short fall either. She gonna have neck problems when she like nine. Why are there so many dudes afraid that they're going to somehow be tricked into dick? First of all, it's conceited to think that somebody likes you so much that they gonna trick you into some, into some dick. Like if somebody finds you so appealing that they cut off their own wang and, and dress up as a girl and like take hormones to get breasts and stuff just to be with you, I feel like that's a compliment, dog. I also feel like it's not something you need to look out for until it happens twice. You feel me? Like nobody expects you to, to mess up like that unless you're like in Thailand. You know what I mean? Also, if you're afraid that you're going to get tricked, maybe ask more questions, dog. Like if you don't know until you know, then that's that's too late, fam. Like here's the thing. I understand why a lot of dudes are afraid because we know at the end of the day, all we really need is friction. And that knowledge can be, you know, off-putting to some of us. I feel like you should be paying more attention to the lady box that you're getting up into because some of that shit bite and it don't let go. I'm low-key still kind of afraid of the dark. And I don't know why I, I believe that light is, is, is better. You be in bed and you turn on the light and you are not scared no more, which is ridiculous. Like monsters aren't afraid of tungsten. You know what I mean? Like they under your bed till the UV hit them and then they just like, oh, I can't deal. That is too soft of a light, fam. Don't make no goddamn sense. I'ma still do it. I'ma still do it. Because before I turned that light on, that pile of clothes in the corner was 37 like demons with strap-ons ready to get busy busy. And I ain't I ain't even like that. You know what the funny thing is? If I turned on the light and it was like 47, you know, demons with strap-ons about to get busy busy, I would just turn the light back off. You know what I mean? Because it's gonna if it's gonna happen, I don't wanna see it. I don't wanna see it. I think sometimes there is a misunderstanding that I handle every situation with dignity and clarity of thought. No, no I don't. I lose my shit sometimes just like everybody else. I do get albino questions almost on a daily basis. And most of the time I'm fairly okay with it. Unless somebody's like deliberately trying to be a dick or trying to use me to make themselves laugh. Which if you're doing that, that's fine. Just I don't need to be involved. Sometimes I get stupid questions and I just be like, you know what, this person doesn't know I'm going fucking, uh, I'm gonna let them know. But sometimes I'm not in the mood and I just walk the fuck off or, or say, you know, yeah, mama, how about that? Try to allow myself to not be perfect. It's the only way to progress in comedy and acting, really. And yes, some of that came from, you know, when I wasn't perfect in the day, you know, people would throw rocks at me. To be fair, though, they, they also threw rocks if I was perfect. It didn't matter. They just threw rocks and tried to set me on fire and stuff. But uh, I think social media makes people afraid to fuck up. Because when I was growing up in the, you know, 80s and 90s, you fucked up. The only people that saw you fuck up was the people that saw you fuck up. But now everybody can see you fuck up. So people are afraid to be bad at something because they're going to get judged by everybody. I don't even know you. So trying to hold yourself to perfection in that climate is even harder and worse for your psyche. Which is why every day I say my fuck yes.
Basically, they're just like positive affirmations, but I don't like that. It sounds douchey, so I say they're fuck ass. I'm not going to tell you what all of them are, but one of them is me telling myself that it is very different to be a fuck up and then to fuck up. It's okay for me to acknowledge my fuck ups, but I do not call myself a fuck up anymore. At least I try not to. I, I do call myself a piece of shit and a monster a lot, but I'm trying to get better at that. I am not perfect and I really don't try to be. That's a lie. Sometimes I still really try to be, but I fail. I'm not, I'm not perfect. The great Jim Carrey once said, you can fail at what you don't want to do, so you might as well do what you love. I fucked that quote up, I think, but it, you get the gist. If you can't do hypotheticals, we not going to be able to be friends. I hate that motherfucker that always got to ruin a hypothetical. You'd be like, hey, man, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? And they'd be like, oh, man, no, nah, I wouldn't want none. I love myself. Fuck you. OK, fuck you, Garrett. Really? Really? You love your fucking self? I hate you. How about that? Don't come to my house no more. I don't like you. OK, ridiculous, man. Just just play the game, dog. This is what we do. I remember one time I was picking gooey ducks. A gooey duck is an animal that burrows into the ground and some people eat them and all of them look like penises. And I was harvesting them. I remember I was with this dude and he was like, you know, he was harvesting them too. And my back is all hurt. We just on an island and shit. It's muddy. It's nasty. It's stank. I'm getting paid like five dollars an hour maybe i had to get on a boat and shit it's cold i don't want to do it but i'm broke as hell and we doing this for like hours and it's sunny outside and i'm albino I'm about to spontaneously combust i just turned to this dude i'm like man let me ask you this man if you could be a tree dwelling animal what tree dweller would you be and he was like oh man nah i would never be a tree dwelling animal i'm dope I wanted to drown him in a gooey duck. Take a whole gooey duck and just put it in his mouth. Just close his mouth. Let him choke on a gooey dick. Why you gotta be that dude? You can't just play the damn game. We tired and miserable. Just play the damn game. Dick. As a kid, I used to eat a lot of bread. I'm realizing now that's usually a sign of being poor. Did you eat a lot of sandwiches with not sandwich shit in them? Like syrup sandwiches? And the, and the sugar sandwiches, some sugar sandwiches was fire though. But then what I like to call whatever sandwiches was just, is whatever was in the fridge that could fit on the bread. Sandwiches. I remember we used to go to the food bank. Oh shit, I was poor. We used to go to the food bank and we'd get all that bread and it would go stale within like 30, 40 minutes. Crazy how much I liked it in toast. Hey, so much toast. So much toast. I still fuck with toast. I love bread. I love bread. I need a sandwich. Like, I don't need a sandwich. I'm, I'm fat enough. I'm trying to lose weight right now because, you know, my shirts is getting, is getting tight. It's getting close to where my gut past my titties. You know what I'm talking about? Right now, I still like, I'm still like, my titties got like a nipple on my gut, but like, it's, it's coming. I like bread, y'all. Yeah, I really like bread. Even when it hurts. You ever have some bread that hurts? Like a French baguette that's just too fucking crispy? Just take a bite of that shit and it's so good, but your mouth all cut the fuck up like you just, like you just had some Cap'n Crunch. That's why I can take the hard breads. Because I grew up eating Cap'n Crunch, which is basically just fiberglass. And I didn't get Cap'n Crunch enough times or on a regular enough basis as a child to complain about the fact that my mouth was bleeding. I just ate that shit. The cereal aisle was a fantasy land, so when I got something out of that beautiful, beautiful place, I did not complain. I gotta thank Captain Crunch for bloodying up my gums and preparing me for the amount of bread I was gonna eat in the forthcoming future. Yes, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, I guess. I just really like bread, y'all. I remember this one time I was uh I was taking the Greyhound, which is never it's never gonna be a, a start to a good story. You saw something that you didn't want to see at the Greyhound station or at the Greyhound on the Greyhound bus. It, I, it's never good. I was taking the Greyhound back from Vegas to Los Angeles. Went to go sit in my seat, which was the only one left, and it was a dude freebasin in 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 the Greyhound bus. And I know some people might be like, "Damn, that's crazy." Did you ask him to stop? Answer is no, because you see. I feel like if he was freebasing uh, on a Greyhound bus in broad daylight in Vegas, me being like, hey, homie, um, could you not do that? I, I don't feel like that was going to solve that problem. The type of dude that's freebasing on a bus, he might be willing to deal with things that I'm not willing to deal with. He was polite, though. He offered me some of that base, which I, dec I declined. So...
Don't freebase on the bus. One time I was at the Greyhound station. I walked into a bathroom to see a homeless dude uh, butt naked taking a shower in the sink. I saw his penis, obviously, and it, it, was, it, it looked like a kangaroo foot. It was dirty and large. Even looked like it had a toenail on it. That was not a good day. My vision makes it hard sometimes for me to hide the reaction I have when something's wrong with somebody's face. Like if you got a big ass scar on your face, I'm not going to see it when when other people see it. Somebody else might have seen it when you was approaching, you was still across the street though. I didn't I didn't see it then. I didn't see it until I had to whisper something in your ear. Hey dog, you see that? What the hell? Oh my. Oh, my bad, dog. I ain't even This has happened more than once and I feel bad. But also, it pisses me off because people see me and they don't know what the fuck. A lot of times they're too far away for me to actually see their freak out. I'm nudging their friend. Yo, yo, yo. A lot of the times I'm not far enough away and it kicks me in my soul. But because I didn't see the shit until it was on top of me, it makes it seem like I'm reacting differently to it. And that's not even it, man. I was just surprised. If you saw me in a dark alley, like you wouldn't move until I did. As disrespectful as that actually is, I kind of get it, but also fuck you. You know, when you big bone, dude, you try to never sit to where your knees is higher than your breasts is. Because then the get up is going to be hard. Like if you over 30, you already going to make a noise. But if you big bone did it in over 30, you going to make it. That's what's going to come out. It's not going to be dignified, but that's what's going to come out. If you big bone did, this is just for your big bone cats. Get them sturdy chairs. No beanbag chairs. And if you're in a beanbag chair and you want to get up out of beanbag chair, just roll off that bitch and push up. Don't try and get up from no beanbag chair because your friends going to laugh at you. And they should. Fat man getting up out of beanbag chair, some ridiculous ass shit. Don't, don't do it. Like a skinny leg white dude with them Larry Bird shorts. That's unfortunate. You know what I mean? Most basketball players' legs look raggedy. They are athletic as hell, but your legs look... Mm. I got them stork ankles, so I can't really say shit. Basketball players be having them matchstick ass legs and shit. That shit be funny to me. Because they too long is what it is. Wobbly ass duck feet. That's crazy. Mm, mm, mm. But they got game, though. Motherfuckers got game.